Uh, hello, my name is Dr. Taz Babica. I'm a consultant in diabetes, endocrinology and internal medicine here at the University Hospitals Plymouth NHS Trust. So I, I, I was always interested in doing endocrinology and diabetes. I was, uh, I think, with, like with many uh, disciplines in medicine, uh, it comes down to your mentor. So in my undergraduate training, I had a very, uh, very enthusiastic and uh, uh, committed mentor. Uh, who uh, inspired me and, and actually that was part of the reason why I chose endocrinology. Uh, throughout my undergraduate training here in the United Kingdom uh, I was also exposed to quite a lot of audits and uh, sort of uh, research work to do with the specialty which again fostered my interest in the specialty. Um, but actually throughout my training I realised uh, before I took on the path of diabetes and endocrinology uh, I realised that I'd, I wanted to do a bit more general medical uh, work and, um, but with a bit of an interest and actually endocrinology and diabetes lends itself very well to that particular aspect in, in that you are um, doing a lot of general medical work uh, but actually you can then drop that and go off and do your outpatient clinics and that really uh, sort of um, appealed to me. Uh, in addition, um, if you are looking for something that isn't related to doing procedural work, so if, you, if you're not interested in lumbar punctures or bronchoscopies or gastroscopies, etc., I think uh, endocrinology and diabetes lends itself very well to that. Um, within diabetes itself, you also have various uh, avenues of interest. So if you are interested in technology, you've got diabetes pump work. Uh, you've got antenatal diabetes, so you interface with other specialties such as the, uh, our obstetric colleagues as well. Um, within endocrinology, there are so many fields of endocrinology, so thyroid, reproductive endocrinology, adrenal endocrinology, pituitary endocrinology, all of, all of which uh, lend themselves to interfacing with other, other specialties as well. So we work very closely with our colleagues in neurosurgery for our pituitary work, uh, our adrenal surgeons, our endocrine nurse specialists as well. Uh, within diabetes, we work very closely with our podiatry colleagues, our orthotics colleagues, our diabetes specialist nurses, the dietitians, uh, and a broad range of, of, of people from across the hospital, including our paediatric colleagues when we work closely with adolescents as well. And so I think that uh, really is a long-winded way of saying I think it's a very interesting specialty that works very well with other specialties in the hospital, can be quite general, and you can foster your own specialist interests within, the, within, the, within both diabetes and endocrinology. Uh, so I did my undergraduate training uh, here in the United Kingdom uh, and then entered into the foundation training programme. So I did my FY1 and FY2, uh, which had a broad range of specialties, including elderly care, uh, which I think is quite an important specialty if you can uh, try and get that under your belt. Uh, I did some diabetes and endocrine work as well as uh, acute medical specialties and general surgery. Um, and, and then I uh, did my core medical training, or what used to be core medical training and is now um, IMT, uh, or internal medicine training, uh, which was a two-year training programme. Again, covering lots of general medical specialties. Uh, I did renal medicine, respiratory medicine, again diabetes and endocrine, um, uh, respiratory, uh, acute medicine and stroke medicine. Um, Within those two, year training, uh, two years of training, uh, I then completed my membership of the Royal College of Physicians exams, um, which took me to the end of the two-year programme. Um, and like many uh, trainees, actually, I took a year out at that point um, and uh, did a bit of locum work, but I also took some time out to travel and to try and foster uh, an interest in, in endocrinology. I came back and did a, a bit of uh, again, audit work and uh, sort of presented myself to, to, to the hospitals that I wanted to work in and say I was interested in taking up a, a career and I think that's quite an important part uh, that we're not often told about actually is if you put your hands up and say actually I am interested, people then take an interest in you and that was an important part of my, my career planning. Um, I then did an academic clinical fellow job in diabetes and endocrinology, uh, so that's a three year uh, programme uh, which uh, was about 25% uh, research based and 75% clinical based uh, and I did that over, over as I say three years uh, which was which was quite a, a crucial part in my in my training it gave me a really good uh, introduction to research um, uh, gave me a real opportunity to have benchmarks or, or sort of segregated time where I could do uh, writing papers, being involved in, in, in really quite important studies within the field of diabetes um, and, and also allowed me to have protected time to do that. 
Um, I also did the, the broad diabetes endocrine uh, clinics, uh, on-call general medical work as a registrar, uh, and did that for a total of five years. I did that uh, as an 80% less than full-time trainee, uh, so actually I was quite different to some of my other colleagues, and, and worked really a four-day week uh, before completing my training programme uh, and taking up a consultant post. So I think to prepare yourself uh, for a training uh, scheme in diabetes and endocrinology, I think one of the key things that you can do is to, to show an interest. Uh, and that's not just to senior colleagues within the medical uh, specialty, but within uh, diabetes nurses. So for, for we have various trainees that have gone and shadowed our diabetes nurses during their inpatient ward rounds and doing perioperative surgical ward rounds and learning a little bit about insulins, for example. Um, obviously, uh, having uh, an interest in doing your medical audits uh, within diabetes and endocrinology allows you to, to have that little bit on your CV to say, look, uh, throughout my career I've had an interest and, I, and I've shown some enthusiasm. Um, the other thing that you can also do is join some of our societies. So we've got Diabetes UK, uh, which you can join for free as, a, as an undergraduate, uh, but is also, is also something you can join as a postgraduate trainee. And similarly for the Society for Endocrinology, that's another society that you can join. And uh, often they have free travel grants to attend their conferences. And actually just, just by attending those, you, you pick up a lot of specialty uh, skills and meet various people who are in the field. Uh, and I think that's quite important. Um, as well as that, uh, sort of introducing yourself to, to colleagues within the hospital who will always guide you and I'm sure will be happy to guide you to, to various uh, projects that you can undertake within the field. Uh, so I think the, the, the thing I enjoy the most about my specialty is being able to, to, to use my brain actually and, and to pause and think about things. So endocrinology in particular is a, is a very cerebral specialty where you often have to pause and, and work things out and consult with your colleagues and we have various uh, team meetings where we discuss our difficult cases and I think for me that's really the ongoing learning that, that occurs within the specialty. Things are always changing within diabetes and endocrinology. Uh, being able to ask for advice and, and to, to ponder on things is actually quite a, uh, a, a rare thing within medicine where it's generally quite a fast-paced ap approach in many of the other specialties. Um, we, we also interface, as I, as I mentioned before, with other team members and I think for me as well, having a conversation that isn't just with consultant colleagues or registrar colleagues uh, and actually is broader than that. So uh, my work uh, allows me to go and I have the privilege of going out to GP practices and, and consulting with them uh, and discussing difficult cases. Uh, we also have um, uh, various patient support groups so, so every now and then we might be invited to talk to patient groups and, and that for me is also really really uh, valuable uh, and I learn a lot from, from those as well. So I think really it's about the ongoing learning process, using your brain to, to work things out and, and, and do that with colleagues are, are, are some of the, uh, the most important and uh, more interesting parts of my specialty I think. Um, so diabetes and endocrinology is, is an is a interesting specialty. Um, because diabetes is a chronic condition we're often faced with uh, conversations around how to perhaps uh, try and motivate uh, individuals to, to improve their care. Uh, and they're often quite challenging conversations to have, particularly around uh, complications of, of diabetes. Um, and um, actually, it, it, it can be turned around, and actually it's quite a rewarding scenario when you meet somebody who's, who's perhaps not got very well-controlled diabetes and, and you take them through their pregnancy, for example, or you help reverse their diabetic foot ulcer uh, and allow them to continue their work. So, um, whilst it can be challenging, you are also involved with patients throughout many phases of their life and I think it can, the challenges can also be part of the reward of the specialty as well. Um, I think within endocrinology there are, there are fewer challenges perhaps, but I think because it's quite uh, thought of as potentially quite a niche specialty in, in some situations, um, the, the challenges are around perhaps uh, how to manage inpatient endocrinology effectively and, and balancing it perhaps with uh, the general medical commitments which are often quite a lot within, uh, within most hospitals in, in the United Kingdom. So we generally see our, our endocrine and diabetes patients uh, in the outpatient setting. Uh, so patients are generally referred to us by their primary care physician or family doctor um, and we're very fortunate to have that sort of first step within the United Kingdom so that patients don't just rock up in clinic and, and we're not overwhelmed. 
um, our primary care colleagues are very skilled, uh, particularly in diabetes and endocrinology, and, and within that sort of uh, strata of, of, of care, uh, we also have not only general practitioners, but we also have practice nurses, district nurses, podiatrists, who can all refer in to see a specialist within clinic. Um, we also get referred in uh, patients who've been seen perhaps as an inpatient in the hospital uh, who uh, the, the care provider within the hospital setting has, has found an endocrine or diabetes related problem. Uh, we may see them in the hospital during their stay for a different uh, condition but uh, advise that we should see them in an outpatient clinic so we bring them back to our clinic at that stage. Um, we also, uh, as, as I sort of outlined briefly uh, before, go out to GP practice pr to practices proactively, particularly for the diabetes work. Uh, and this is a model that's evolving throughout, throughout the country, really, where we go out and discuss difficult cases with our general practitioner colleagues in, prim in the primary care setting. Uh, we don't necessarily see the patients face to face, but we offer advice and we are using more IT uh, or information technology uh, tools to allow us to identify patients with particular uh, medications and particular patterns of diabetes control that may need uh, some escalation of their therapy uh, and that's something that that is working with good effect uh, in the, particularly in this part of the country. So I think if, if you're interested in a career that's diverse uh, that involves general medicine uh, that's quite cerebral and allows you to interface with other colleagues I think diabetes and endocrinology is, is, is clearly uh, the, the best medical specialty out there. In order to, to pursue it my advice would be to, to get the basics under your belt so uh, find yourself a mentor who's an, a diabetologist or an endocrinologist um, and sit with them see what they do sit with them in clinics see the types of patients that they are seeing uh, and I think you'll quickly realise that it's a really interesting specialty uh, and you'll very quickly understand what the, what the gaps in your knowledge will be and, and, and take that on board and, and read up on that. Um, take um, uh, some projects under your wing so I think being able to um, say early on in your career that hey look I've been to a conference and, and presented a poster or I've been involved in this particular audit or quality improvement project is, is really crucial. Uh, for the overseas uh, undergraduate uh, trainees or postgraduate doctors um, I'd say come to the UK as an elective, uh, come, and, come and find somebody who will mentor you and, and sit in with them as well. We're, we're always happy to have people come and sit with us in clinic and, and, and understand a little bit about the United Kingdom healthcare uh, setting and, and how we operate here. Um, I, think that's, I think that's all I'd say, yeah. <laughs>